Do you know what quantum physics says? The observer decides the fate of the ob object. In, co in Newtonian physics, observer has nothing to do with the phenomena. Whether somebody is observing or somebody is not observing, what has to, has to happen will happen. If the ball has to drop, then it will drop at the particular speed and then it will uh, move on. But at the quantum level, it's not like that. The observer decides whether this particular entity will behave as a wave or a particle. Not only it doesn't stop there. Observer can decide even retrospectively. Means what? A phenomena has happened. So we used to say this. Uh, I'll give you a joke. After uh, Dr. Goswami went away. So somebody raised this question. Uh, okay. We used to have this common problem. People used to keep their uh, fan and lights on when the power was off. And they would come to the class. And then the power will come and the, the fan and light will be running. And uh, the gurukulam has to pay the electricity bills and all so we there was there would be common reminders uh, when, uh, constant reminders that please switch off your lights and fans when you leave your rooms etc etc so the joke was that since nobody is there in our rooms so even if the electricity comes and the fans and lights are running since no observer is there so, the fans and lights are not running. Hmm. So, if they are not running, then the bill should not come. The electricity bill should not be affected. So, this was the uh, doubt put forward. So, then some other group answered, yes, that is true. The, if nobody is observing, the fans and lights will not be running. But the problem is, when you go back to your room, and when you see the lights and fans running, then the retrospectively, whatever electricity, electricity should have been consumed will get consumed and the bill will come. And this was a joke, but this is a reality. Re Quantum physics says, if, uh, if some phenomena which has happened, which has not been observed, if it is observed after some time, then the effect happens retrospectively. And they have done such experiments. They would, they would collect data from a counter, electronic counter, which will score 0 to 9 randomly. And on an average, the number should be 5 because that is the middle number. But if you, if an observer is asked that you wish that the number is more towards 10, and then it will move little bit towards 10. Hmm. And if the observer is asked, you, you wish that it is less than 5, then it moves less than 5. So up to that, it was fine. Then what they did was, they conducted that experiment without the observer, recorded the whole thing, and after 6 months, asked the observer, you wish that the recording is more than 5. And it would show more than 5. Means what? Retrospectively, the counters moved. And moved more towards the digit 10. This has been done experimentally. So is this not a miracle? And this is science. And the next question is, who is the observer? This is mind-boggling. Eyes are not observer. Because if eyes are observer, then even camera is an observer. Camera is not an observer. It's a goal. It's an instrument. Then who is an observer? Brain. Brain is again a particle. It's not an observer. So then who is the observer? So then ultimately, you land up what Alan Watt says. That the same, the so-called whatever God or Almighty is observing itself through us. We are just apertures. Hmm. Who is the observer? Because ultimately there is only one observer and that 
which purusha the universe which is self aware now tell me where is science where is faith and you are talking about faith every theorem in geometry is based on faith they name it axiom to prove a theorem you need an axiom to prove an axiom you need another axiom axiom is something where you don't question you assume it to be right so everything is based on faith somewhere you have to have faith based on that your arguments are developed so faith is the starting point just by just because you named it axiom doesn't change its nature it remains faith 